please welcome now on stage Bernhard, Robert, Tobias and Sebastian. Ah, there's Bernhard. Hello. Ach ja. Well, hello, hello. Test one, two, three. I have number four. Four? four. I can talk. Four, yeah. <laughs> we can talk. Have you tried turning it on and off? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for having us again for the final panel discussion of NEOS Conference 2022. Bernhard, Sebastian, Robert, you've all had talks at this conference, so you've already talked about the one topic that was most important to you. So now's a chance to go a little bit beyond that. So going beyond PHP 8, going beyond the content repository that's been, you know, driving your thoughts for the last seven years, probably, and, you know, APIs and components and multi-dimensional fallback graphs. <laughs> that was Bernhard's topic, actually. <laughs> Robert, um, you touched um, on some... On me? Yeah, no. Um, dur during the keynote, you touched on a topic that, that I wanted to bring up in this panel discussion again, um, because I think that's something that we are handling in, in, in the back office side of, of the NEOS community a lot, and that's not very well known to a lot of people. So I want to talk a little bit about trademarks and uh, NEOS legal stuff, because that's actually a thing. Um, so when we created the NEOS Foundation Association, which um, is the legal entity that's, that's you know, uh, protecting the NEOS and Flow trademarks, um, Robert took care of getting all of that back to, to NEOS, where it belongs. And you've been fighting for two years? <laughs> yeah, at least two years. So um, to, to give you a little bit of perspective, that's where some of the money we get from the long-term support um, is spent so that we can keep our awesome logo, our awesome name. Um, Robert, give us a little bit of perspective what's going on there. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that uh, once you st start using uh, such a trademark, um, you can do so. Uh, I mean, we created the original logo and, and uh, Christian uh, came up with a name during that lunch in Denmark. And, but the problem is uh, others can also use that. And if they uh, register a trademark, we cannot use it anymore. And so that's basically what we discovered late, late on, or almost too late, because um, we knew that uh, someone was writing us that we uh, must stop using our NEOS logo because they had a trademark in the US. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and we actually had no chance because we didn't have any trademark yet. And uh, Eight hours later, we had a trademark in Europe. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> that, that was really some, some crazy uh, um, thing. Because when we have a trademark in Europe and they have a trademark in the US, we have something we can talk about, right? Um, and that took two and a half years uh, to, to talk about that. And in the end, we are now actually to, uh, allowed to use uh, the NEOS logo in the US as well. Um, yeah. So, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, I, I'm not really doing that for fun. Uh, I have to say, I really like our lawyers, they're so nice um, and, and friendly and we have nice talks, but we could have that uh, in different occasions. But it, but it gave me a big scare when, when we got this email and, yeah. you know, I was thinking, do we have to give up on the NEOS logo now, which we just, you know, came up with a few years ago. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for taking up this fight, basically, this negotiation in the end and um, doing what, what um, you could possibly do um, so we can use NEOS and Flow and the names and the logo and, and everything. Thanks very much for that effort. Yeah. Sebastian, um, apart from the event source content repository, the new content repository, um, NEOS and Flow, depend and, and profit so much from packages that are developed from the community, from a lot of companies, individual contributors, and um, you yourself are open sourcing, you know, every, every other 
months. More or less, yeah. <laughs> uh, new packages. What are challenges um, when you you know w when we open source packages and what's you, uh, helpful feedback um, in in yeah open sourcing packages? Uh, yeah. So so I mean um, the point is that it's not just you know pushing something out and then let it go without any readme or anything like that. You know it needs good documentation. It's basically the basics. You know it's like providing a package the way others, or you would like a package to be when you first see it. So have a good readme, explain what it's doing, uh, what is the intention of things, and um, and I mean, I, that's what I try myself, and sometimes I succeed better, and sometimes I fail miserably, I mean, you know, <laughs> I guess we all do. But, um, so that's, that's a big challenge, I think. Um, and actually, I think that's also something where we can help each other so much, you know, by, by pu giving pull requests for documentation. So even just writing in, in the readme, marking a place and saying, I don't get what this means. So it doesn't even need to be improved, but saying, okay, this is, I understand it like this, but it doesn't make any sense. That is so helpful, I would say. And, um, and that also applies to the code, you know, if, if um, so, so I, I, I personally also try to write in every class like a meaningful, like why is this thing there and where should I look if I want to look deeper, but I fail in like 80% of the cases doing that, I would guess, at least. <laughs> so, uh, but that's something I think where we can help each other out very much. I think where it works really well is actually like this, these bug fix things. So actually that is, I think, working really nicely. Um, um, that you know, people send pull requests if uh, the packages are not updated for the recent version. So, I, because personally, I'm not not so good in doing that. Actually, I mean, like other people, you know, they have they are very methodical and they are able to do that really before the release. Like Johnny John does that for all his packages, and I'm like, whoa, crazy! That's so cool. And <laughs> for me, it's more like uh, sometimes I see it and then I'm like, oh, hopefully it didn't wait too long in the review queue. So. Um, if that happens, please just ping me on Slack because sometimes I just miss the notification. So, yeah. Who in the audience is not on our Neo Slack yet? Everybody's in the Neo Slack? Okay, good. Thank you. And also, um, from my perspective, if you, know, you have discussions on Slack and you find a solution, um, Slack is not very accessible for you know, anybody else searching on the internet. So if, if there's um, things you, you discover and you find out, post it in disc Discuss. Um, it's a good place um, to find answers. All the emails that come to our hello at Neos.io mailbox asking for help, I send to our Discuss. So all the answers there are actually uh, visible uh, to everybody else. Um, is there Neos on Stack Overflow? Is that a thing? I Does anybody know if Neos exists on Stack Overflow? Maybe, okay. So I think we can all, um, you know, contribute to that, writing blog posts, sharing information um, about challenges we, we solved in Neos. Bernhard, what, um, apart from, you know, really fancy back-end stuff, um, what are some of the challenges you face in your everyday Neos and Flow projects? Um, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's basically, um, for example, how can I query stuff uh, from the content repository and um, how can I actually be safe and sure that whatever I do, that it actually works, right? And what are tools or what, what, what do you do? Do you talk to your colleagues? Do you look, up in, do you look it up in the code of NEOS itself? So uh, mostly I look, up, look it up in the code, right? I mean, I've been there uh, <laughs> once or maybe <laughs> more than once. And um, it's really, really helpful if everything's uh, documented properly and uh, stuff is named uh, similar to what it does. But I really, really love that. I've heard this word domain-driven design a, a few times in, in the NEOS community. Robert? I also heard that, yeah. And how does that relate to what Bernard just said? Things doing or being called what they actually do. How does that help? Ah, ubiquitous language, you mean? Yeah, I don't know. What? No, it's, <laughs> I think it's just a general uh, principle to name things right and to uh, write tidy code. Whatever so it's, I is. wouldn't say that, yeah, whatever that is. Um, but, but we have a culture of, of doing that. So we have lots of discussions. Uh, 
about naming things, for example, and, and that pays off, I think. How, how, did, how do these discussions happen in the core team, like when there's you know, big ideas for implementing new features? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there are discussions, there are aggravated <laughs> discussions. <laughs> I mean, they're all res respectful, right? So we, uh, we like each other. Um, things can get intense, I think. But in the end, we always uh, come up with some solution how to name things that everyone can live with. And where do these conversations happen? Like, is it done during sprints, or do, do they happen on Slack, or in Discuss, or...? Um, basically everywhere, I guess. I mean, when stuff gets uh, complicated, we usually do a Slack call or something, because typing is just not enough for that. Uh, or we do a phone call, or, or even at, at sprints. Sprints are really nice for that. So um, if you want to get involved in like these discussions, sprints are definitely the way to go. But usually also, um, when we do this on Slack, uh, we announce these calls in the proper channels, like in the uh, repository rewrite channel, when there's an upcoming call about something. Um, and here in that channel, you'll notice. So that is something that um, I want to give you all um, another information about. There's a Slack channel called Next Sprint. Uh, where we're planning the sprints that are going to happen. So next week, um, we're meeting here in Dresden. So if there's uh, some people uh, who are staying here and or from Dresden and who want to attend, uh, feel free to join us uh, for, the, for the sprint, of course. And I really do hope that there will be at least one more sprint this year. I also think these sprints are so important, uh, also historically. I mean, not historically in the sense of we rented that castle in Denmark, uh, but these were so intensive times or on that houseboat, uh, and uh, I think it was only possible to come up at least with a spark of a new concept or something like that uh, when we meet in, in person. For me, at least, it's very difficult to really do completely out of the box uh, thinking and and emotional discussions over Slack when I'm at home or, or even in a video meeting. That doesn't feel the same because I know that I need to go downstairs after that to uh, uh, empty the dish uh, washer or something like that. You really need to get out uh, in order to think what's the next big thing and then you can work properly uh, at home uh, implementing it. And I've heard it's also a, a very good time to you know, get your hands dirty in starting core development. Like the, the, yeah. the people are right there, you can talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that is extremely important. So you know, there are no, any, no prerequisites to joining such a sprint. So if you've not set up NEOS before, that's not a problem. We are there to help. And, um, and um, so if you if you're not coding that's not a problem so there are always lots of to do's around the code as well and we ha we have more and more people helping out there so that is really really cool and um yeah we've done parts of the website on the sprint um so there's lots and lots of different to topics we've done organization for the conference um just planning like the, the structure and the ideas here and i think what is really important on such a sprint is what we try to do is we we do some team retrospectives and like socializing because that really you know pulls us together as a team and and uh, yeah that that's that's really really nice and um th i think that's where much of the spirit also comes from it comes from the community but it also comes from uh, that we sync each other in the team um, even though where we you know in long long intervals but then it 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 touches us together really closely somehow I don't know yeah thank you very much for sharing these insights um, Bernhard looking looking back at the past two days of this conference um, what's the talk that inspired you the most and um I think uh, it definitely was the um, continuous integration and testing uh, to, uh, because that's something I really, really want to do myself. Right? I mean, for the event source content repository, we have, have really great test coverage and it just feels so much better. Um, so that I know if I refactor something, if I optimize something, uh, that, I, that I, I know that I didn't break anything. And um, I mean, in your regular marketing web page, that's not so super important, but it's super annoying if something goes wrong. And uh, I want to get to, into that topic a lot more than I do currently. 
Robert, how about you? What was the talk that inspired you the most? Uh -huh. Yeah, I have to say uh, what happens often during these conferences is that I end up going to a talk and then someone grabs me and say, Robert, just a minute. Um, and so I spend most of the time talking outside. <laughs> so what I usually then do is uh, yeah, watch that online again. Did you have a, uh, an inspiring conversation where you think, oh, that's, lots, that's lots of. I, I was, I, I realized I was so thirsty for uh, talking to people, and you always not only, yeah, uh, luckily not only talk about uh, fusion problems or something, but uh, also more about what what they do and what they, uh, yeah, what what makes them tick and and so on. So I I got to know lots of people here. That's, that was really nice. That was the most inspiring talk for me. Getting into touch with the community again in a face-to-face -face level. So I have to agree that it, for me too, that was the one thing I was looking forward to as well. Um, Sebastian, during NEOS conferences, we've learned uh, about quite a few things where you've left your mark in the NEOS code and where there were comments left. Um, a fix after G3 board is a classic Something one. Like that, yeah. yeah. So, a question for you: um, You're working on a lot of into the future stuff, but you're also involved in daily projects. Um, what is a thing about Neos currently where you think, ah, oh, if I could redo that part again? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So, so it's. Um Actually, I think we are in a really like in a good shape in general. So there's not a one thing which stares at me all the time, so to speak. So nothing like that. But there's just one. I I, I sometimes um, look at the Symphony ecosystem, especially like the developer tooling they have built, um, the debugging tools they have built. And actually, I would like to use that inside Neos. And of course, it's not. It wouldn't be that easy to do that. But um, um, so that is something if we would get into that direction to share more code, to, to help us out more even maybe. I'm not sure how, what this actually means in terms of, you know, like the infrastructure, if it would be put on top of Symfony or if we use more components or whatever, you know, I don't have a clear idea on that. But but um, I just feel that, that we can have more synergies there um, because I think we are going into the same direction. So Symfony has gone from like, or in my perspective, at least from the perspective of like, you know, no conventions at all, and you can do whatever you want up to now, where they basically have also somehow more and more strong conventions, something like auto wiring for the dependency injection going in, and and so so it's it, it is somehow converging in a in a direction really interestingly, and um, so that is interesting to see definitely. Yep. And Bernhard, uh, from your perspective, when you look around the community and the things that are done by non-core team members. Um, what are the things that, that are going on that spark your interest? Is there something in particular you're, you can think of where you, you heard about something? Um, yeah. Um, what I think is uh, most interesting um, for me is um, the um, efforts uh, that go into the direction of headless CMS, right? Uh, where you have uh, some kind of probably semantical API where you just can query uh, the content repository and do whatever you want with those nodes, and um, which is also a thing we want to um, uh, provide better support for with the new content repository. And um, yeah, there's not so much going on in the core right now regarding that, I guess, but there is a lot of um, stuff going on in the community with uh, several... GraphQL packages, for example, and uh, that's really interesting. And when there's multiple packages, how, how do you choose one? What? Um, usually, um, yeah, if I have to choose one, I just maybe the one that, that looks better. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I suppose they all work, right? Um, because otherwise they wouldn't be um, so prominent in the NEOS ecosystem. And um, I mean, interesting is what happens next, right? Because if something um, gets a foothold, uh, like a GraphQL query thing, then um, maybe some uh, synergy version with the best of both packages makes it to the core. And that's something uh, I really like about the Aeneas community, because that happens um, yeah, all over the place. <laughs> Thank you.
That's actually an applause for you, right? The community contributing to the core and then, you know, that your, your contribution getting implemented and getting returned to, to everybody again, which is, um, you know, the core concept of open source that, that I personally love so much. Robert, when you think about open source, NEOS, is there, I, I know that in the past there have been other projects that, that have inspired us, that have influenced us. I mean, we have a, in the past had a very close relationship with Type 3, for example, of course. Um, is there, I know Corona and everything, but in the past few years, what have been the main influences for you thinking about, you know, how NEOS behaves in, in the open source community? Yeah, that's, um, well, multiple levels. Uh, so one thing is uh, that there are um, communities or, or frameworks or projects which inspire me, but not in the way that I would like to take them as a role model and repeat that for ourselves, but they trigger ideas, yeah? Um, or they uh, make you, they open a door and, and you think like, okay, that's amazing. I, I didn't even know that this, these communities exist. For example, one, one of that moments was uh, a uh, domain-driven design conference in, in Amsterdam, where I realized uh, the people there were developers, of, obviously, but they were never talking about code really. So they were, <laughs> and and they never mentioned the programming language. Um, and so this was about concepts and so on. And this was really interesting to see that you can approach it that way. Um, yeah, but. I think what what uh, interests me much is this whole development of uh, or this whole concept of cloud and microservices is old fashioned anymore and in, in, in nowadays but I think that has a lot of impact for us as well because as as Bernard mentioned uh, in the community there are so many crazy projects going on which are not just a NEOS website on a server um, but with architectures uh, playing with together with other um, programming languages, uh, services, and distributed, and, and so on. And this definitely has an impact on, uh, or, or needs to have an impact on Flow and Neos as well. So we need to see uh, where we need to adapt uh, to make, make it even more suitable for these cases. So have you thought about what you're going to do during the sprint next week? What's going to be your area of focus? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, we have this um, upcoming NEOS 9 release, so uh, maybe yeah. uh, we start with Get that. Get that finished, um, yeah. <laughs> Get it started, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 uh, we, we, we'll finish starting, right? Um, oh, we'll start, well, I have to think, start finishing, finish starting? I don't know, something like that. I think yeah. Bernard is right, yeah. yeah it's so, usually. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it would be um, super awesome if we had um, like something like Alpha 1 or Alpha... 0.1, <laughs> something like that, um, after the, the sprint, so we actually have successfully merged all the stuff, so we can say, okay, we don't need these extra packages anymore, and um, this is the, um, the package structure that we want to uh, release with, and um, then maybe throw PHP stand at everything, so we, that we know that, it, that we can safely start refactoring all that towards the final version. Yeah, so we'll discuss, I think, very much about package structure, naming again, naming of packages, these kind of things, and I very much look forward to that. Yeah. I actually have, for the first time in years, have, have a, pro a certain topic I want to work on, and that is um, modernizing flow in, uh, for PHP 8, 1, 8, 2, and so on. So there are, for example, uh, old parts uh, like the reflection service and so on which we tried to replace recently by some third uh, party library but it didn't have these features so uh, it obviously still makes sense to have that but it needs to be modernized it's uh, it grew a bit old now and I, I really would like to do that so so that flow feels fresh again inside <laughs> and are you plan Spring cleaning <laughs> Are you planning on doing that alone, or do you have a, oh, a team? Better not. No, at the same time, uh, th that's a great opportunity. There are a few uh, places in the core, like proxy class building and, and so on. Uh, hardly anyone dares to do anything about it, because it looks so complex, and I did that in, in the very beginning. And 
a sprint would be a good, good opportunity that I can show someone around and uh, make them less scared and, and that we work on that together. So let me finish this panel discussion with saying the sprint next week, while we meet in person here in Dresden, um, if you can attend online, we always try to have a hybrid uh, setup and we uh, try to meet usually at around nine in the morning uh, for a stand-up so that we can uh, you know, talk about who's going to work on what. So if you have some time available or can make some available next week, um, check in with us to see what, what the team, the sprint team is working on and how you could possibly contribute and help shape the future of NEOS and Flow. So thank you very much to the panel today, Bernhard, Sebastian, Robert. It was great talking to you and I think now we're looking forward to conference closing. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.